In today's video, we're going to learn all about grips from D and Tar Lewis from Low G. Stay tuned. Well, hello everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please think about subscribing to the channel and giving the video a like. I also teach online bagpipe lessons if you want more personalized instruction, but more on that later. So today we're talking about two rather unusual embellishments, the grip from D and the tar lua from low G, and in each case we're going to take the normal embellishment and play it differently. So grips from any other note, A, B, C, E, F, high G, and high A are all played low G with a D grace note separating them. However, if the note before the grip is a D, the note separating is going to be a B grace note. That's right, the bottom ring finger. And tar luas, if you're playing a tar lua from A, B, C, E, F, G, and high A, those are all played by going to a low G, separating with a D grace note, and then heading up to Typically an A with an E grace note, though there are of course other exceptions. The tar lua from D I've already covered. It's going to be in a video somewhere above my head here or in the description. The tar lua from D, similar to the grip we're going over today, is going to have one of those B grace notes. But that's not what today is about. Today's video is all about the tar lua from low G and it's a very unusual animal compared to the rest of them. In the description below there's a link to the PDF document we have here. So go ahead, print that out, put it on a tablet, have it in front of you so you can follow along. I've affectionately dubbed these embellishments the oddballs and actually wrote a tune we'll be playing at the end of this video called the oddballs that incorporates both these rather unusual embellishments. Before we dive into the exercise, I first want to work on stretching this bottom ring finger. So what I want you to do, and there's no need to blow through the practice channel as you do this, go ahead, put your fingers in a low G position, and then I want you to explode that ring finger off the chanter and let it very slowly come back down. This is all about a nice explosive motion up so that we're recruiting more of the fast twitch lifting muscle fibers. And no worries if at first you can't kind of have it pop up quite so quickly. I've been doing this for quite a long time, but this will go a long way to helping get that finger under control. So you can see in this exercise, we're starting G grace note on D, down to the low G. Eventually this will be part of the ornament, but for our purposes here, as we build it slowly, it's a full beat of low G. We'll then separate it with that B grace note, trying to keep it as small and chirpy as possible before heading to an A. Then we'll do the same thing, except instead of ending on a low A, we're gonna head back up to a D. That one is nice and awkward under the hands, but we're gonna set the metronome at a reasonable speed and see how this goes. So here's the first two measures of the exercise. For the next two measures, we're going to do something quite similar, except now we're going to put the two low Gs across one beat, each being just half a beat long, and to give some extra time to the note we're resting on, either an A or a D. Let's give that one a try. For the next two bars, we're going to hold the first note now for a beat and a half rather than one beat, and then use the second half of beat two to put that ornament in, the two low Gs now represented as 16th notes. Bum, do, do, da. Bum, do, do, da. Let's give it a go. And if you find that too quick to get through cleanly, that's just fine. Go to the previous section and keep working on that at a reasonable metronome speed. It really takes a good long time to build up the dexterity in that ring finger. Then for the final two bars here, we're going to do a D down to low A and a D to a D with the ornament at full speed, though we'll see how it comes out when I play it. It's difficult for every piper at every level. That B grace note is tricky. 
with this D grip, like all grips, we're taking its time from the note before. So the D before the ornament is where the time is being taken from, not the note after. That final either A or D is gonna land smartly on beat three with the grip taking away the last part of beat two. And even there, I would like to see if I could get that B grace note just a little bit chirpier yet still, but it is what it is. That finger is a tough finger to move, and perhaps that's some of the charm of this particular ornament. Let's talk about that Taralua from Low G. There's two things that make the Taralua from Low G interesting. The first for me is that it does not double the low G. We're gonna be on low G and then use grace notes to take us up to an A that we will repeat. So while a normal Taralua from any other note, even D, is going to be two low Gs, either separated by a D grace note or a B grace note, in this case, it's an A that's gonna be separated by an E grace note. And then the second thing, the Ornament only has one sounding tone. That's a note written like a grace note that we want to hear, whereas a normal Taralua has two sounding tones, those two low Gs, bop, bop. This one just has one A before landing on the final A of the ornament. It's really not as confusing as it sounds, and we're gonna start right now with this first measure, G grace note to low G, D grace note to low A, and then an E grace note to yet another low A. And I just repeated the measure right there. Do it as many times as you need to to get those grace notes accurate, clean, and on the correct beat. Now for the second measure here, which again, I'll do on repeat a few times, we're gonna do again a G grace note to a low G, but this time we're gonna hold it for a beat and a half, then make it up to the A with a D grace note before separating that A with an E grace note on beat three and holding that across beats three and four. <laughs> For measure three, we're gonna hold that low A even longer. This time it's gonna be for a beat and three quarters. That's the double dots there. The first dot is half, and then the next dot is half of that half. So that's a quarter plus half, is three quarters. So that's a beat and three quarters. That's how you would write it out. Kind of crazy looking, but that's how it's done. And then you see the two flags on that low A, meaning it's a 16th note or one quarter of the beat. But the E grace note's still gonna take us to the low A, on beat three and hold that across beat four. I think it'll be easier to hear than explain. <laughs> then we're to the ornament in real time right here. You can see it's written out just as grace notes. Remember with this Tara Lua, we're gonna be taking the time away from the note before. So that low A in the Ornament is taking its time from the low G before, not the low A after. There are ornaments that fall before the beat and ornaments that fall after the beat. In fact, I got this uh, tree graphic right here that'll be for sale soon with a whole video about it. Don't wanna get ahead of myself, but it basically describes ornaments that happen before the beat and after the beat in a visual way where you can see what I'm talking about. So let's try this Charlua from low G in real time. Make sure with this Taralua that you're hearing the A between the two grace notes. We do not want. That's where the grace notes are both a little tall and big, as well as overlapping. And we can't hear that A between them, which is what we want to hear with this rather unusual Taralua. Whether it's the grip from D or the Taralua from low G, don't worry about speeding it up until you can do whatever section of this exercise cleanly with the metronome with everything correct. There's no point in playing something fast if it's gonna be out of control. And to wrap us up today, we have the Oddballs March right here. This is a tune I wrote so we can have plenty of practice with Tara Lewis from Low G, Grips from D, and hopefully a fun little melody to put them all into. <laughs>
Well, there you go, everybody. Two unusual embellishments, but ones that are good to have under your fingers so you're not surprised when you run into these in the wild, be it in a Peabrock or an oddball tune like that one right there. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you got something out of the video, please think about giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. If you're enjoying the content here, think about heading over to my Patreon. And a special shout out to my number one supporter, Michael Dingus, and my newest big supporter, Dennis Mulgrew. You'll see names now, folks scrolling up. These are folks that support the channel monthly. I'd love to add your name to this list. You often get early access to materials and videos, as well as other perks, so go head over to the Patreon. I also teach online bagpipe lessons. Go ahead and head over to www.commandyourbagpipe.com or email me at the address you see right here and we'll get you going. I'm working with folks from all over the planet. I hope to work with you soon. I also have Command Your Bagpipe merchandise like this lovely hoodie and prescription bagpipe merchandise like this mug right here. But there's also t-shirts, hats, tons of other stuff. Go check out the merch store and let the world know that you command your bagpipe. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. Again, I'm Matt Willis, and until next time, cheers.